Hi everybody, Jonathan here and welcome back to another Vectorwitz tutorial. Today I've got something very exciting planned. I'm going to be showing you how to make amazing high quality plants and assets for Vectorworks using Glow Plants. Now I've been partnering with Glow Plants on a couple of projects. I did a really good twin motion video. If you haven't seen that, take a look. And I've got another one for Enscape coming up soon. But today I'm going to be taking a look specifically at how you can turn basically glow plants into fantastic high quality image props for use in Vectorworks. So if you're like me, uh, these are kind of really useful in your design when you're kind of working in 3D and you'll find that we can get amazing levels of quality in these glow plants just very, very straightforwardly. So let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, everybody, so let's get started on this new Vectorworks tutorial featuring the glow plants and how to make these into fantastic quality image props. Now, I would recommend visiting the Globe website. Um, you'll see that there's some fantastic plant bundles here. There's a really nice British New Garden Plants one, and it's great to see them addressing the UK market as well. Um, do check out my links in the video because I do have a referral code to give you a really nice discount. And I would love you to use that so you can get some great bundles at a great price. Okay, so I've already got some of these downloaded, and but I definitely recommend you explore the website there. So let's go into Vectorworks. Now the very first thing is um, I've been messing around just making a little kind of garden just because I wanted to kind of put these plants in a little bit of context. And if any of you would like me to share this file with you, just the garden without the plants itself, then you're more than welcome. Just drop me a link and I will share this file with you. Okay, great. So let's get started on how to make these glow plants. You can see I've actually got a few layers in this little project and I've got a blank layer here where I'm going to make my uh, image props, if you like. Now, I have noticed there's one thing that I would like to recommend you do before you uh, go ahead. And basically, let me just bring across my glow plants. Okay, so here you can see some of the glow plants uh, image is that I'm going to use to generate these props. Okay, and what I've noticed is that there's quite a big sort of boundary around them. Okay, and this is fine, this works, no problem. But what I would recommend, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one number four. And basically, I'm going to start off with the PNG uh, elevational view. So I would recommend you open that up in your image editing software, whatever that is. And basically, just basically use uh, a marquee to put a crop in and just crop it in a little bit tighter. Um, so this basically reduces the size of the image that you're requiring to bring into Vectorworks and it all really helps. Uh, it also really helps if the bottom is basically where the, uh, the root of the plant is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and crop this image. Uh, you can see I'm just using Preview on the Mac at the moment. Um, the other thing that I can do is, while I want to save that file, I might also want to duplicate it. Okay, and the reason I do this is so that I can save it into another folder called low res. Okay, so I've got some slightly lower res copies here. I'm gonna call this LR for low res. And you'll see why in a minute. This is a pretty big file, okay, 17 megabytes, and I don't really want that for one file. So now, if I go to um, adjust size, and again, you can do all this in Photoshop, I'm just gonna reduce that file size a little bit here, as you can see, and click okay. Great, now there's one final thing that we do need to do in order to get these to work as image props, when we save them, we must make sure that they are JPEGs. So um, I think I did that before, but if not, just export it. Oh, I didn't actually. Just do it as a JPEG, not a PNG file. And you'll understand why when I get to this next stage. This is quite important. So just to recap, I've resized the image slightly. I've basically reduced the file size to 800K. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG, okay? And now, let's go back to Vectorworks. You'll see that now we can go ahead with either a model, create image prop, and this will be the same in the Arctic version as well as the landscape version. Now, when we do this, we can import an image file. If we'd already brought it in, you can see I've already brought a few in uh, in preparation for this tutorial. I could reuse some of those. Let's go ahead and bring the new one in. We'll click OK. And basically, here is my new one, and you'll notice that the PNG I tried didn't actually come in. Okay, so that was the reason I converted it to a JPEG. Um, I'm not quite sure why that doesn't work, because Vectorworks can import PNG files, as you'll see in a second, but maybe it's specifically for the image props. Okay, so we'll go ahead and basically bring in uh, the JPEG version. And the good thing is, because I've cropped it a little bit, this is a bit smaller. Now at this stage, you can put in the, the, the width and the height that you might want for your image prop, but we can always adjust this afterwards. 
and you can lock the aspect ratio or not, it's up to you, okay? So we want to click Use Mask, we're going to click Create Mask, and then we're going to reuse the props colour, okay, because the prop already has uh, the background mask from the PNG file. So when we click OK, we really want to just select Transparent, click OK, and now you can see we've got a little dialogue that shows uh, what the transparent image is going to show us. And if you did want to, you could sort of change this with different tolerances and so on as well. But I found this to be absolutely fine. So we'll click OK. Um, all of these options can be ticked for now. We can always come back and revisit any of these in a moment. And we're going to basically click OK one more time. So what you see is a cross that appears on the drawing. But if we pop into 3D now, you will notice that we've actually got these, what they call crossed planes, which when you look at them in front view, look really, really good quality. And they look pretty good from 3D view as well. The nice thing is they spin to face the camera. Okay, and you can see that because it says auto rotate. Now, if you did turn off auto rotate, they wouldn't rotate to face the camera. You can get more of an impression. But if you auto rotate them, they face the camera. Uh, the cross planes as well, you could just have a sort of flat one rather than a cross plane as well. Those are the kind of options, as well as the lock aspect ratio. So if you want to make this a little bit higher, for example, or a little bit wider, let's make it a little bit less wide, we can adjust all of this as well. Okay, so once I'm pretty happy with my symbol, um, you'll notice that it doesn't really have a very nice uh, aspect to the top plan. So here I am in top plan view. So what we now do is we can basically do a similar process to bring in a really nice image of the top. Okay, so let's just pop back into my finder. I'm going to go this time to the top view, the PNG, and just right click and open this file. Okay, so here we go. I would recommend you probably put the crop in again, just to kind of reduce any excess sort of image size. Um, and this just keeps it really nice and tight to the actual kind of required image itself. Um, it'd be nice if perhaps Globe Plants could, could think about that for Vetduits, but I understand why they haven't done it for various reasons. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to save that one. Also going to go and uh, duplicate one more time because I do want to keep the original high res one, but I'm also quite keen to, when I save, just have these uh, new sort of processed lower res versions. So basically, I'll just keep that and add in the low res uh, acronym there. Now this time, I don't need to drop it to being a JPEG. I can actually keep this as a PNG file if I want to. So keep this as a PNG, and that means it will be a bit bigger file size, but the alpha channel will work really nicely, as you'll see. So we'll go ahead and save. So now I can go back into Vectorworks and either go file import, or uh, one of my favorite tips is just go into the folder and basically just drag and drop. Okay, so drag and drop import has always been a really nice thing to do in Vector2x. You'll notice it starts to import. You can, amazingly, you can even reference it, so that means that if you did tweak the colors and things in Photoshop, they would also update, and that would potentially keep the file size down. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, I'm not gonna change it to a JPEG just at the moment. I'm just gonna keep it as an alpha channel. Okay, and we'll click okay. Now, it'll probably come in pretty big, okay, and that's because it's super high resolution. So all you need to do now is basically just move it and overlay it onto my cross planes. So just with a bit of care, I'm going to put it onto that section there. Uh, let's kind of just squish it, so click G, just so we've kind of got it about the sort of same width and proportions. Now, if it doesn't matter if you're not exact, but that will do. Now, you can see the sort of clip map is really, really good with these PNGs. Uh, you can use JPEG, but it isn't quite as good. And if you really need to, you can always go in and resample this a little bit less. At the moment it's 20 megabytes, so let's say I take it down, say 1500. You can see this dramatically reduces the um, file size, and there's all the sort of different sampling methods in there as well. So yeah, they can really help. Let's click OK, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so what we've now done is brought the bitmap in. Now, we can't add the bitmap straight to the uh, image prop. So there is something we need to do first. So what I recommend is you basically just cut that image prop, uh, the image away. And the very first thing we need to do is right click and actually create a symbol. Okay, so let's go and create a symbol. Um, it's not a bad idea to give this the name of the plant that we're using. So let me just kind of get the name. So it's a cornice, this is a cornice, 
Sanguinea, if I'm saying that right. Any landscape architects out there will correct me, I'm sure. And this is 004, okay, just so I can identify it. Um, all of these settings are fine. I'll leave you a moment to copy them down. And you notice that I'm also assigning this to a Globe Plants Props class as well at the same time. So let's go ahead then. We'll make our symbol. And basically now I've made the 2D symbol, uh, the 3D symbol rather, what's really interesting is I can double click and I can edit the 2D part. Now there isn't a 2D part in that symbol currently, but the good thing is on my clipboard was my plant that I processed a second ago and resized. So I can paste that in. And you'll notice now when I click at exit symbol, suddenly the plant has a really nice 2D graphic. And if I want to, I can put a really nice little kind of drop shadow on there. I love the drop shadow in Vectorworks. It's a really nice sort of a little aspect that you can just play around with. Um, and you can kind of give it different offset values and things as well. So really, really nice just to kind of give it a nice sort of subtle drop shadow potentially as well. Let's go about 50%. Okay, great. So if I want to, I can turn that on later. But basically, let's have a look at how this looks in 3D now. We've got a nice image prop in 3D. It looks great in elevation. It looks really good in top plan. Okay, the only view it won't look so good in is, of course, the top view, because in the top view, you're seeing the cross plane. So just try and avoid that. Now, what I can now do is basically, let's uh, move this over to my image props completed. And let's kind of have a look at this in place now. So with my garden and all my other image props turned on that I've been uh, programming through so far, you can now see my new one. And basically now I can just start to work with this. So if I do want to, I can put that lovely drop shadow on the plan. Let's just duplicate some of those along that little avenue there. And look how nice that looks. They look really, really fantastic. Um, you know, as I rotate around, they look very natural. And if I do go into perspective mode, um, I would expect those to look even nicer. So I like the way that they kind of face the camera as you kind of move through. And you see that the quality of these is high. Okay, they do turn and face the camera. That may be something you want to turn off if you literally are animating. But for still images, they look absolutely amazing. And in elevation, um, very, very hard to beat. So this is just sort of shaded rendering in Vectorworks. And I think they look amazing. So I hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial. It's definitely something I would recommend uh, doing with these glow plants. And thanks for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.